we call self-control the moral muscle. Uh, I think uh, moral virtues are mostly things that show good self-control. The seven deadly sins or other lists of vices are mostly failures in self-control. So I, I, I'd, ha I'd hesitate to moralize self-control per se, but it, it's the foundation for morality and for moral behavior. It's what enables us uh, to do what we think is right instead of what we want to. Psychology has found really two traits that predict success in a broad uh, range of spheres, all walks of life. These are intelligence and self-control. Uh, after a century of working at it, we haven't found much in the way of ways to produce lasting improvements in intelligence. But self-control can be improved anywhere, so it, it's really a key uh, uh, entry point for uh, doing things to make people better and stronger and improving their chances to succeed in life. So having in mind how you run the, the affairs of the university, uh, how you run your classes and so on, uh, that in addition to uh, imparting knowledge to the student, we also want to do what used to be called building character in the sense of improving self-control. I think would, uh, would be a strong candidate for producing lasting uh, benefits. The term willpower was, was popular in the 1800s uh, because then uh, you know, that was a time when society was, saw itself as in moral decline and was trying to remoralize itself. They were trying to raise the, the tone and they, they, they thought effort to make yourself a better person and to live up to high virtues and so on, that that was what is important. In the earliest 20th century, that gave way instead to the, the, the self-help book switched from uh, you need to have willpower, uh, that to just believe it, you can achieve it. And the idea of just believing in yourself or thinking something, that that was uh, uh, seen there as, uh, as the goal. And the idea of willpower went somewhat out of fashion. And it, it came back somewhat by accident from our research that we found after people exerted self-control in uh, in one task and then would go on to a different task, then their, their self-control uh, showed some deficit and it looked like some energy or something had been used up. And we, we hesitated to use the term willpower. Uh, there is this traditional idea that willpower is an is a aspect of your character, that it's a constant, whereas the whole point of our research is that it is, it is fluctuating. And yes, there are differences and there, there is an aspect of, of personality. And, there are stable differences between people. Some people seem to have more than others or to use it better than others. Uh, but still, uh, the important thing is that it, it fluctuates. You don't have the same willpower every day, every hour of every day at all time. No, uh, it, it goes up and down. Uh, in fact, uh, the, one of the studies we had where people wore beepers and reported at different times of the day what they were doing and whether they were resisting their desires and so on, showed uh, you know, changes within the, the same person that. Uh, the more as you go through the day and resist this and resist this and make yourself do this, you use up your willpower and so you become more and more likely uh, to, uh, to yield and to give in to whatever desire comes along next. The history of uh, relationships research looks at uh, should, how should people be similar or in some ways are, is complementarity good if they're, if they're different. Uh, we've looked at uh, that with self-control. You know, you measure the self-control of both people and compute the difference by subtracting, uh, and then is it the bigger or the smaller difference that uh, produces the better relationship outcome? Uh, what we actually found was it, it was neither, that the difference had no relationship to it. It was the sum. The more self-control both people have, the better the relationship is. And this was true for married couples, dating couples, and same-sex friends. Uh, so in all sorts of relationships, uh, positive self-control is a uh, good self-control is a really positive uh, trait that uh, makes both people in the relationship happy. And one person is happier to the, to the extent your partner has better self-control. Uh, it, it, it's ironic for me, I grew up in the uh, 60s and 70s when we were rebelling against all these arbitrary rules. And we used to have dress codes in high school and all that stuff. And uh, it used to be nobody swore in, in public, uh, and certainly not if there was a female present. You know, that would have just been, uh, been, been unthinkable. And so we rebelled against that and got rid of all these uh, arbitrary rules. Uh, and yet now here I am as a <laughs> much uh, older man, uh, finding in my laboratory research that conforming to arbitrary rules is actually good for you uh, because it does uh, uh, build character. So I, I kind of scratch my head and say, well, all those things we did away with that you'd have to line up and stand straight and work on your posture and wear certain kinds of clothes every day and you know, watch how you spoke to the teacher and all those things. 
that, uh, well, <laughs> those, uh, those do have some, uh, some use and some benefit. Discipline in, a, in an environment, including in an academic one, uh, is something that people can, uh, can gain from and, 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 and respond to. Uh, and acquire then the ability to, to have self-discipline, which, uh, as I said, that's a key part of self-control and that will help them do better uh, in their, their own endeavors wherever they go.